I'm going to teach you today how you can create a simple image file, send it over to the user. After that, you gain full control of the entire PC. And with that image, you can even send it to Mr. Hacker Lloyd. Now, what I can do for you is that I can help you investigate your IP address, your email, your password, every information about you, and I will hack you for free. And now, before we go any further, kids, remember, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them you know who is Mr. Hacker Lloyd. If you want to hack, you must hack only the devices that you own. And yes, this video is strictly for educational purposes only. And if I was to send you any file, just go ahead and open it up. I promise you nothing will happen. I mean, just look at this image. It's so innocent. What can Mr. Hacker Lloyd do to you? I would just help you check what is your email and password and date of birth and all the information about you. I'm just doing it for free for you. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> There will only be three steps for today's session. Step one is you need a photo of someone who is very good looking like Mr. Hacker Loy. Step two is you need to now write code, which is going to be written in say PowerShell script, or at the same time, you can also write in a batch file script. Step three is where we are now going to be able to convert this script that you have written into an exe format that allow us to embed the icon of the image that we've selected earlier into the exe file disguising it as an image well that sounds pretty straightforward isn't it so as you can see here i have already downloaded the file next up what we need to do is to go ahead and create a new file do a right click new and go ahead and select under say text dot document so whatever the case is we'll be renaming it so in this case i'm going to call it as hacker alloy dot ps1 which is for powershell script extension hit enter on that and once you hit enter on that you will get a pop-up that says the following rename all right so we're changing the file name extension click yes done and what we'll be doing now is do a right click onto the file click on add it all right so once you click on add it, you can see over here we have windows powershell ise i have already written the code for you and you just have to follow this it's pretty straightforward so what we're doing now is we're downloading a specific file called netcat so this will give us the ability to gain control remote control of the computer and with that what we're doing here now is to go over into the system environment folder of desktop so whatever the user is going to be opening the file from we can go into the desktop and be able to launch this executable next up we have the file path and of course finally we are joining the file name as well as the path Next up, what we're doing now is to target into the image file of Mr. Handsome Loy. So we're able to download that file. And again, same thing, save it over into say desktop. After which, what we're doing here now is we're invoking the URI that we're targeting. All right, and then we're going to hide that file. All right, same thing for item or object number two. And then after that, what we do now is we have a special parameter that launches Snapcat in silent in the background, connecting over into the hacker's IP address, which then give us that reverse shell. And you can see right towards the end, we're executing all of this together, along with opening the image, but hiding everything else. And right here, we are on our favorite article hacking operating system, Kala Linux. And all we got to do right now is go ahead and enter, say, NC NLVP 4444 to start our listener so that when a user open up the image, this gives us access to the computer. So going back over in the PowerShell script, we want to make sure that the script is working first before we convert it into an executable. So what we can do now is go ahead and click on to run. The script you're about to run will be saved. Click OK. And then now what we do is we head back over into Kali Linux. And you can see right here, we now have access. We now have remote connection to the computer. I can say enter, who are you? All right, just kidding, there's no such command, but I can enter say, who am I? I am PC Young. All right, so this is Hacker Loy. And of course, at the same time, we have the handsome image popping up right here. So what we need to do now is to convert the PowerShell script over into an executable. So in this case, we have the source file. So let's go ahead and select the source file. So I can do a right click on the source file, click on the properties. And over here, all right, we have the details and we can see that is on C, users, young, desktop. So go ahead and click on OK. And now what we can do is go ahead and enter the following, our source file slash C, users, young, desktop, slash hacker dot PS1. All right, so target file is going to be c slash users right young slash desktop slash and of course we have the icon file so what i have here now is the file and all we got to do is go ahead and click convert into the ico format and we'll be able to download the file so let's go ahead and download that into our desktop so that we can use it as an icon so you can see here we have the dot ico file and of course we now have highlighted the icon file all right and we have the version product name and so on and so forth suppress output suppress error output 
So once you're ready, go ahead and click compile and you can see right here a pop-up. All right, the pop-up says the following. Okay, we're compiling the file and the output file has now been written. All right, go ahead and press enter to leave. Done, we now have the file. So you can see right here, the file has been created. So we can send this file over to anyone and once they execute under the file, that's it, it's game over. Now, before we do that, we need to rename this file. So do right click on this, click rename, and we're gonna change the following. So we're gonna enter .jpg. All right, .exe, done. On most computers, if you go on the file explorer, you click onto view, there are a couple of things that are missing. First is that they do not have the file name extensions being opened up. And number two, they are hiding all these different items. As long as the attribute is hidden, you will be able to hide that file, hide that folder. And this is the default settings. Now, as you can see here, we have downloaded the file and the file can come from an email attachment. It can come from a social media message. It can come from many different places. And what's gonna happen now is if you double clicked on it, it's game over. We'll go back over to Color Linux and start up our listener. So let's go ahead and enter NC, NLVP, 4444, hit enter and that's what we're listening. Our attacker machine is waiting, waiting for connection to come in. Now in three, two, one, I hit enter on that. Boom. <laughs> we have opened the image. Now, if I go back over to Kyle Linux, you can see right here, we are in. We now have full control of the entire computer. Yes, it is game over. I can say, for example, this stuff the user by entering, say, notepad.exe, hit enter on that, and if I hit back over to the user computer, you can see that notepad has now been opened up because we have remote control of the PC. Now, let's go ahead and see what are the indicators that this is a bad file. So go back to File Explorer, click under View, select onto File Name Extensions, go back to View again and select onto Hidden Items. So now when we close this, we can see a couple of things here. You can see there are two files that have been created into the current directory or folder. And at the same time, if you look over into the file here, we have hackerloy.jpg.exe. If you right click onto the taskbar, click onto Task Manager, you can see right here there's something interesting going on with NC dot exe running and this is particularly unusual so all we got to do right now is go ahead and right click on nc.exe click end task and if i hit back over in call linux you can see right here if i hit enter on this now we have lost connection we no longer have access to the computer so we no longer can remotely control and see what a user is doing